we are live, we can begin. Good evening to all doctors in India and uh, good morning in Brazil and afternoon to the doctors from wherever you are watching us. In fact, it gives me great pleasure to say that this is the final uh, sixth in the series of masterclass in endometriosis that we are going to go live. Now, it's been a great journey. We started with uh, FIGO under the guidance of Dr. Jaydeep Malhotra, with Dr. Pratap Kumar, Naren Malhotra, and the four speakers, international speakers, whom we have had till this time, and Dr. Jaydeep also being one of the speakers. And today, of course, we have with us Dr. Rui Feriani. So before I just get into the details, I take pleasure in introducing our parent company, Acumes Drugs and Pharmaceuticals Limited. Doctors Acumes is the largest contract manufacturing pharma company of India. And we deal in the manufacturing and export of formulation in a wide spectrum of dosage and therapeutic segments. And the company is currently supplying to almost all Indian and multinational pharma companies across the globe. Next slide, please. Dr. Acumentis, in fact, our vision is to become a global healthcare company, empowering each and every patient on earth with novel healthcare solutions to fight their discomforts. Doctor, to just give you in a nutshell, we have nine strategic business units. The women's health care forms a major part of our portfolio, the, followed by the cardiodiabeto, ortho, pedia, derma, and of course, the general segment. Our unit is called Harmonica, the division which serves women's health care through gynecology, obstetrics, and IVFs. Harmonica, as the name signifies, brings back harmony to life. Next slide. And of course, as far as our unit is concerned, we deal with medical management of uterine fibroids, medical management of endometriosis, medical management in PCOS, and of course, the IVF therapy. Doctor, I take great pleasure in the next slide. Can we have Dr. Malhotra's slide? Yeah. I take great pleasure in introducing Dr. Jaydeep Malhotra. I have done it for the last five times. And this will be the last time in this master class in endometriosis, which I am doing. And it's a pleasure to introduce her. Dr. Jaydeep is director ART Rainbow IVF. She is president Safoms, past president Foxy, Aspire, Isar, IMS, and ISPAT. She is the president of Indian Society of Prenatal Diagnosis and Therapy. Vice President, Indian Society of Aesthetic and Regenerative Gynecology. Regional Director, South Asia, Ian Donald School of USG. Dr. Jaydeep is Professor, Dubrovic International University, Croatia. She is Editor-in-Chief, Safog, Safom's Journals and many books. The most important, Dr. Jaydeep is a member of FIGO Committee on Reproductive Endocrinology and infertility and FIGO working group on RDEH, which we Indians and the entire fraternity is very proud of. She is the recipient of honorary FRCOG and FRCPI. Dr. Jaydeep is the Lifetime Achievement Award of IASSRF and Amar Ujala Gaurav Samman Award. She has a place in India Book of Records and World Record of India Swords India Awards Swang Siddha, and she was awarded by Governor, Governor of UP Sri Ram Naik Ji, the Indomati Javeri Prize. Over to Dr. Jaydeep. Thank you. Thank you, Shubhaji. Thank you so much. And a very good evening to all of you. Namaskar and good morning from the other zone from where my dear friend Rui is coming uh, today. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure that we are now coming to the last of the six lecture module of Masterclass on Endometriosis, which has been really phenomenal. And we've had some very wonderful engagement 
uh, not only in India, but from all over the world. And I really want to place my heartiest congratulations and also thanks to each and every one. Uh, first of all, Yvonne, Yvonne Dez, who was the chair of the REI. And today I happen uh, to take her chair and she moves further to be the division head of the sexual and reproductive health uh, division of FIGO. And uh, we have been, you know, uh, together uh, as a journey for last three years in the FIGO REI committee. And I'm sure all of you know Yvonne. Yvonne has, is the gynecologist and obstetrician and specialist in human reproduction and gynecological endocrinology. Uh, is also the professor at Nueva Granada uh, Military University. And she comes from Colombia, Bogota, and has been the past president of the Colombian Federation of OBGYN. She has uh, done phenomenal work as the chair of REI committee for the last uh, three years. And uh, I move on to now introduce our speaker and the chairpersons. And our speaker is none other than Rui Ferriani, uh, an extremely accomplished person, is a professor of reproductive medicine at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, He's also the chief of reproductive sector at the Hospital Das Clinicas at Preto, president of the human reproduction section of the Brazilian Federation of OBGYN. And Rui has been the member of the REI committee of FIGO and has had a uh, tremendous amount of work in deep infiltrating endometriosis. And uh, that's why he is the apt speaker to address this lecture. And to chair this session, we have two chairpersons. Uh, have my very, very dear friend, Pratap Kumar, uh, who is the head of the Department of Reproductive Medicine and Surgery. Pratap, welcome. You have been a phenomenal asset to, to this uh, module of Masterclass of Endometriosis. And uh, he is the head of the Department of Reproductive Medicine and Surgery at the Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. Everyone knows Manipal for a great educational platform. He has been the National Vice President of the Federation of OBGYN, uh, FOXI, as we call it, in the year 1999. He is an inspector, examiner, advisor, and a very, very popular teacher, I would say, uh, for the Indian uh, con continent. And uh, he has been appointed on the editorial committee of various uh, journals, has been the president of Karnataka State OBGYN Society, and is the member of the Task Force of Human Development and Disease Biology of Biotech, um, New Delhi. Uh, Pratap has reviewed, you know, he has been uh, working on many, many projects and has been in the review group of reproductive and child health of ICMR. Uh, and we have our other chairperson who seems to be very busy in another webinar, which is getting late in the South Asian Federation and the Ian Don Donald course. I think he's going to join us a little later. Uh, it's Dr. Naren Malhotra. I think, yeah, there you are. Welcome, Naren. Narin is also the director of ART Rainbow IVF Agra and managing director of the Global Rainbow Healthcare. Again, a very accomplished person in the Indian scenario. He is the director of international relations of the South Asian Federation of OBGYNs, also the president of INSARCH and a professor in the Dubrovnik International University. He has been the past president of many organizations um, in India and also international. And we're looking forward to a great, great session with both of you, Pratap and Naren. And Rui, the stage is all yours. We are absolutely eager to listen to your deliberations on deep infiltrating endometriosis because endometriosis has really intrigued us. And especially this area has always been very difficult to diagnose and difficult to treat. So we're really looking forward. All the best. Everyone, it's my pleasure to, to be with you here. And I would like to thank to JIDP and, and Ivoni, the current and past president of uh, Ray, uh, Figo, 
a committee. It's very nice for me to discuss with you some points of controversy in endometriosis and infertility. Uh, endometriosis, uh, it's a pro-inflammatory phenomenon and chronic inflammation. And we have an impact on reproductive system with impaired oocyte maturation, embryo development, uh, an embryo development arrest, and reduced implantation potential. So, uh, in this recent review of eight guidelines, all the guidelines, they agree that combined oral, oral contraceptive pill and progesterone are therapy recommended for endometriosis associated pain. But concerning infertility, there is no clear consensus about surgical treatment. We will discuss a bit about that here. It's quite important to think about endometriosis in a novice and gyne office. Uh, there are, in some patients, in specific symptoms and pain, and of course, in some patients, difficult to get pregnant. What kind of pain? Usually chronic, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, deep pelvic pain, or lower abdominal pain with or without lumbar radiation, related or not to menstrual cycle, acute, intense, mild, nauseous, exacerbated by physical activity and burning. So when we talk about endometriosis infertility, we can have a diagnosed suspicion or a confirmation or strong suspicion. Not always necessary to have a surgical diagnosis of endometriosis with strong suspicion with image, ultrasound, ultrasound, a good ultrasound or magnetic resonance, we have this strong suspicion with infertility and pain for these patients. So endometriosis is a chronic disease and we treat symptoms. What to treat? Pain, quality of life of these patients, infertility, and even disease progression. What about hormonal treatment? The most classical treatment of these patients. Here we have a consensus. Hormonal treatment should not be prescribed ovarian suppression to improve fertility. This is a strong recommendation. This is the less ASHRAE guideline. Uh, the, 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 the past guideline is from 1914. Uh, 2014, and now we have the draft review for this guideline and not definitive, but this is a strong recommendation. So hormonal treatment, we know it's very good for pain and quality of life, but for infertility, it's not a good option. And for disease progression, we have some doubts about that. The other form of treatment of fertility, infertility problems is assisted reproductive technology effective for these patients. And in fact, it is. In this recent review, we have a slightly lower uh, number of oocytes collected and fertilization rate uh, when we compare endometriosis patients with other infertility reasons like male factor, tubal factor, and explained infertility. But we have similar aneuploid rate, pregnancy loss rate, and live birth rate after fresh or frozen embryo transfer for these patients. So, although endometriosis alters natural conception rates causing infertility, its negative effects the, do a uh, toxic pelvic cavity condition are bypassed by reverting to ART. So a, a, a assisted reproductive technology is the treatment of choice, the best treatment of choice for infertility 
to endometriosis. So when we talk about endometriosis, assisted reproduction is not good for pain and quality of life, but for infertility is good and for disease progression is not good. And the third form of treatment of patients with endometriosis, surgery. Is surgery effective in endometriosis associated infertility? Yes, it is. First of all, let's talk about endometrioma. In fact, endometrioma associate, uh, the, the laparoscopy for endometrioma associated infertility may increase the chance of natural pregnancy. It's a weak recommendation. The level of, of evidence is low, but in fact, it can increase the natural pregnancy of this patient in case of endometrioma. And deep endometriosis, what about that? The same. Uh, laparoscopy for deep endometriosis probably improves fertility of the patients. Natural conception is clear for a lot of service of that and may represent a treatment option in symptomatic patients wishing to conceive. And here you see symptomatic patients is the best patient for surgery treatment uh, of endometriosis. So surgical treatment is good for pain and quality of life. And it's good for infertility as well. And is good for disease progression. So we have the three forms of therapeutic for endometriosis patients. Clinical treatment, assisted reproductive technology, and surgical treatment. These two options are good options for treating infertility uh, in uh, patients with endometriosis. And what should come first? Which one is the best? We don't have the answer of that because we don't have randomized studies showing that. But let's discuss when to choose one or another one, because both treatments, surgery and ART, are good treatments for infertility associated with endometriosis. And what should we evaluate like factors indicative of ART? A concomitant male factor, low ovarian reserve, advanced age, and previous surgical fa failure. Also, when we talk about uh, freezing oocyte or embryo freezing before surgery with, with risk of ovarian damage, this is a good option for doing before surgery. And factors indicative of surgery, which one? If we have it in the location of ureter, ileum, or appendix, risk of intestinal obstruction, large endometrioma, intense pain, previous ART treatment, and natural conception chance after surgery, because surgery increases the natural chance of fertility of these patients. And see, we have the, the option of previous surgical failure doing ART, previous ART failure doing surgery. So we can change one or another one. What's the role of surgery in the treatment of deep endometriosis? So it's good for to uh, alleviate painful symptoms, improve sexual function, strengths couples relationships, and positively impacts a woman's quality of life. But both treatments have difficult and collateral effects related to ART. Uh, what's the effect of ART on symptoms and recurrence of endometriosis? We have this systematic review except for risk of infection, ovarian stimulation for ART does not seem to cause symptom progression or recurrence. 
and related to sur surgery. What's the difficulties about that? And here we have some difficulties. Surgery of deep endometriosis is associated with complications, particularly when involving the intestine, with intraoperative complications and postoperative complications in a high tax, and this depends on surgeon skills. In this other meta-analysis, we have a complication rating until 10%. And the kind of complications, fistulas, retrovaginal fistula, anastomatic failure, anastomatic stenosis, and emptying dysfunction. And when we talk about specifically endometrioma surgery, here we have the risk of ovarian damage. So the surgery can have some malefic with ovarian damage and can be beneficial. What's the effect of surgical management of endometrioma on IVF outcomes when compared with no treatment? This is the question. If we have an endometrioma, shall in an indication of IVF, shall I do the surgery before the IVF? In this review, there were no significant difference in pregnancy rate by cycle, clinical pregnancy rates, and live birth rate between women who underwent surgery for endometrioma and those who did not. But uh, we have probably effects on ovarian reserve of these patients. See in this another uh, recent uh, uh, systematic review, there is a reduced number of oocytes and M2 oocytes retrieved when compared to women without surgery previous. No other difference in reproductive outcomes were identified. This implying that IVF in ICSI is beneficial for women with endometrioma, but we miss, we must be careful because there is this risk of reduction of ovarian reserve for these patients. In this uh, paper, comparing unilateral versus bilateral ovarian endometriotic cystectomy, the same, there is a drop in antibiliarian hormone by almost 40% and 57% in unilateral and bilateral groups after the surgery of endometrioma. So endometrioma cystectomy, especially as bilateral operation, has a deleterious and sustaining effect on viral reserve. We must think about that before indicating a surgery of these patients. So we can have a malefic of these patients in endometrioma, and we can have some beneficial as well. Just to guide the thinking about that, we can, in endometriomas, uh, perform IVF directly to reduce timing of pregnancy, to avoid potential surgical complications, and to limit patients' costs of these patients. Indications for surgery. In presence of large cysts, there is no a right size of cysts. Used to be four centimeters, but now it's, we say large cysts. To treat concomitant pain symptoms is a very nice indication for these patients. And when malignancy cannot reliable be ruled out. So for deep endometriosis now, we talked about endometrioma and deep endometriosis. Surgery probably is not malefic in ovarian reserve. Without ovarian, uh, if it is not affect ovarian. But what about surgery? Is it benefic, beneficial for these patients? In fact, we have a high spontaneous pregnancy live birth rate in patients with severe endometriosis 
after surgical management. So uh, it's a good option for these patients. But a, a question, very important question. If there is a classic indication for assisted reproductive technology, surgery prior to the procedure would increase the chance of pregnancy. Shall I will do this surgery before ART? In this recent meta-analysis, the only one, there are no randomized studies about this question. And this meta-analysis showed an, uh, better reproductive outcomes in patients who underwent surgery for deep endometriosis before IVF. Pregnant rate, pregnant per patient, pregnant rate per cycle, live birth rate per patient. But this review has a high risk of selection and allo allocation bias with the choice of the patient. So we don't have a randomized study saying that. In this recent meta-analysis, they show a better reproductive outcomes of surgery before IVF for these patients. So the role of surgery is a matter of intense debate. debate. Available evidence is poor, as it amounts mostly from case series or observational uh, studies with a lot of bias in selection. With changing, here is a good thing, with changing surgical practice and expertise in pelvic surgery improving, more encouraging results are expected because the older studies were done with older technique, surgical techniques for these patients. So the decision of this point, operate or not operate, is dependent of the skills of the surgeon and quite important, is better not to operate than to have an inappropriate surgery. This is quite important. Why that? Because it's possible to cause a ovarian damage of these patients. It's quite important also, a complete planning with good image, image of these patients and a multidisciplinary endometriosis teams before surgery for, to perform the surgery. So to help the decision for surgical treatment, the best patient with presence of pain, with obstructive symptoms, urinary or gastrointestinal threats, risk of malignancy, prior failed ART cycles, and experience of surgical teams. This point, point for the decision for surgical treatment of these patients. So the decision should be individualized. And the patients should be empowered to make a choice with us, doctors, with comprehensive counseling about uncertainty of benefits regarding fertility and potential risks of complications with the surgical team's own figures of these patients. And we must talk about options of fertility preservation before surgery. This is a recent point that we must discuss with patients. Before a surgery, we must discuss about fertility preservation of this patient. Discuss about oocyte and embryo cryo preservation, especially if the surgery will include a endometrioma excision. This is important. And We have now some observational studies, two big studies, about the fertility preservation for in women with endometriosis. This study from uh, Eve Group, Ana Cobo, they showed that the number of vitrified oocytes per cycle was higher 
for non-surgical non patients compared with surgery groups. And Charlie Chapron group showed us that factors that significantly reduce the number of oocytes were, uh, were previous history of surgery of for ovarian endometriosis. Of course, women's age and total dose of gonotrophin used as well. So it's quite important to discuss with the patient and maybe to perform surgery after ovarian stimulation for fertility preservation in young patients. And even the, the best patient for doing fertility preservation are the younger patients and before a surgical approach for these patients. Other points of debate about patients with endometriosis and infertility. Fresh or frozen embryo transfer? This is a new question, recent question in literature about that. It had been hypothesized that the, the endocrine conditions during ovary simulation can have an aggravation, uh, aggravating effect on possible dysfunctions in eutopic endometrium. Because of that, it has been postulated to perform always frozen embryo transfer for this patient. Do we have an answer for that? No. Frozen embryos could be more successful. This is a question. And we have only three retrospective studies with limitations, non-randomized design, even ignoring, ignoring the presence of adenomyosis and low quality evidence in favor of frozen embryo transfer. So it's just that we have in literature. And we have recently this year, two points. The, this one, freeze-all approach is not recommended unless we, you have more than 15 oocytes. And other authors advocating that free chamber, fresh chamber transfer should not be offered in endometriosis. So this is an open question. Is it, we, we need randomized studies to answer to this question. And what about protocol for ART? Is there the best protocol for these patients? The, a specific protocol for ART cannot be recommended. You can use both antagonist or agonist protocol. Most of the service use antagonist protocol, but there is not one that is be better than another one in terms of protocol for ART. And another question, shall I use agonist prior to ART? In the past, we have this version of using at least three months of agonist uh, prior to perform an ART. And there is a strong recommendation that the administration of agonist, of agonist prior to ART uh, is not recommended as a benefit is uncertain. And what about hormonal pre-treatment of these patients? Also with level or low level of evidence, there is insufficient evidence to recommend that prolonged administration of contraceptives or progestogen as pre-treatment to ART to increase live birth rate. And another question, after surgery, the post-operative hormonal should be used. There is a strong recommendation that should not be prescribed post-operative hormonal suppression with the sole purpose to enhance future pregnancy rates. Of course, you can use if the objective is to treat pain of these patients, but for enhanced future pregnancy rates, it's not 
uh, uh, the evidence is quite strong not to recommend this operation. So we have hormonal treatment uh, as adjuvant is not a good option. So in assisted reproductive technology and surgical treatment are good choice for the patient. We have to individualize the treatment of these patients to choose the best approach for them. In infertility and suspicions of endometriosis, always evaluate concomitant factors. Not operation without good strategic planning. This is very dangerous for the patient. See the risks of compromised ovarian function and always do not delay the treatment and always think about fertility preservation of this patient. And what to take in account? The age of patients, ovarian reserve, the presence of male and tubal factor, associated symptoms, infertility time, in general, consequent repercussion, couples anxiety, and access. In Brazil, we have this problem for both. We have difficult to access for both ART and surgery. Good surgery. This is the point. Good surgery, we have difficult to access for this patient. And previous failure of both surgery before, ART after. ART before, surgery after is always an option. So endometriosis is a chronic disease. We use normally medical hormonal treatment in the early years of the patients. During the reproductive phase, we have both options, but always think about surgery. One shot surgery is not good to have a lot of surgeries in the patients. The best team to operate these patients. And after that, we have to follow these patients and remember that the pregnancy aspects of the patient with endometriosis, they, they can have more morbidity during pregnancy. Endometriosis can have some problems uh, uh, during pregnancy of these patients. So, uh, I would like to thank you, the audience of this, and I think this, this subject is quite exciting about the options to perform surgery or, or ART for these patients. And unfortunately, we don't have good randomized studies to answer uh, the, the main questions I formulated here. But we have observational studies and we always must discuss with the patients the options and individualize the treatment of this patient. Thank you very much. So thank you very much uh, for your lovely lecture and a lot of informative points that you, you did raise on that. And uh, there are very interesting questions for you. So can I ask you the questions? Yes, of course. Yes, I would yeah. like to answer the question. Normally, we have a lot of problems to answer sure. questions on endometriosis. Yes, of course. Uh, you did give a lot of points on that. But the, the doubts people have is that uh, you did say about surgery in deep infiltrating endometriosis. Uh, uh, to us, we felt that uh, to hire without surgery. Did you say that? The pregnancy rates are higher without surgery, or uh, do you want to clarify on that point? Uh, so, show me, uh, please. Uh, I I said that without surgery we have a higher uh, pregnancy rate. I just want to clarify that point. Uh, what do you think about pregnancy rates? Is it with surgery or without surgery? Ah, okay. Uh, we have a lot of observational studies showing that surgery improved pregnancy, uh, spontaneous pregnancy rate in some patients. This is clear. 
It depends on the surgeon, of course, but uh, no doubts that surgery is effective for pregnancy rate, for, for better pregnancy rates. But we have to think, I don't know about you in India, but in Brazil, we have difficult to, to access good surgery treatment for these patients. And normally we prefer these patients, uh, a good, a good uh, uh, personalized uh, team to do that, specialized, is better than uh, a general obesam gain because always we have the risk of ovarian damage for these patients. So, uh, and the complication rates, even in good hands, is high. And you see, we have a, a young patient, 32, 33 years, and he can, uh, she can have some uh, post-operatory complications with bowel dysfunction. It's not a good, a good thing. So I think uh, we must share with the patients these points. Yes. Uh, the main patient to be operated is that one is easier uh, for patients with pain, associated pain. But if I am in, uh, interested only in fertility of the patients, uh, here in Brazil, there is a joke. Uh, which one to choose, surgery or ART? And we say it depends if she goes to a surgery a surgeon or if she goes to a, a reproductive medicine before uh, this this is a point because uh, nobody's there is no mistake in choosing one or another one but yeah. we have to individualize and share with the patient this decision normally uh, i have patients that no i don't want surgery in my life now I, I would prefer to do ERG. Do I have chance with that? Yes, you have. Other, do I have chance doing surgery? Yes, you have. But you must know about the complication rates and things about that. I don't know uh, your opinion should be Dr. Narenda, if you'd like to, because I would like to say I'm not surgeon anymore. I, I'm doing just IVF, reproductive medicine. But I'm always in in meetings discussing with surgeon and i think we must discuss in, in a good way no no uh, Narim, I don't... Narim, you can uh, unmute yourself. so so if she comes to me i do surgery if she goes to telly it'll be ART first <laughs> to, to add on to your joke now uh, that uh, that will always remain a debate and surgery definitely has its own place and has to be done of course well what I was wondering was that you have an infertile patient. We've done IUI, everything. We finally label her as unexplained. And then she, we take her up for laparoscopy. Now, during laparoscopy, you find, find that actually there was minimal endometriosis. There were some nodules and all. So a lot of uh, normal gynecologists will leave it alone because they're not experienced. But should we tackle minimal endometriosis at a routine laparoscopy by surgery, or should we leave it alone? Yes, uh, I, I did not have time to discuss about minimal endometriosis during my talk, but it is a quite important. Uh, we have uh, just one rhodomyosis study about that, showing that if we uh, uh, burn the lesions of endometriosis with minimal endometriosis, we can increase the chance of uh, pregnancy for these patients. But uh, normally, we, we must use some criteria. We don't do, we don't perform diagnosis laparoscopy on routine basis. But if the patient, and it is a problem in Brazil, doesn't, she is young, doesn't have access to ART, I indicate surgery for her. Be why? Because I can have an improvement in pregnancy rate of these patients, even with minimal endometriosis. And so this is an option with minimal endometriosis, perform laparoscopy. But normally I individualize the patient, taking account the semen parameters, the age of the patients, ovarian reserve, and discuss with her. 
Uh, you can do surgery or we can do uh, after IUI, I mean, or uh, but we we cannot have um, we cannot spend uh, many time doing uh, a treatment uh, without success. If she doesn't get success in the early uh, month of treatment, we must change the strategy of this patient. So we have both tactics, uh, I, uh, uh, IUI, ART, or surgery for this patient. But normally I don't perform uh, diagnosis laparoscopy for all the patients, I individualize. I don't know about you, Dr. Marot. Did you do that? No, we also don't do diagnostic laparoscopy. Laparoscopy yes. is kept only where ultrasound shows problem or if yes. she fails with IUI and we're not able to find any cause. So that 10% okay. peritoneal factor we want to rule out could be minimal endometriosis, only those cases. So no no diagnostic laparoscopy at all. Yeah, and you have an increase of pregnancy weight for some patients, but some will not be pregnant. And after this, we, we must Correct. go to swigger. Uh, can I ask you another question? You did mention about uh, three months of general channel log before ART. Uh, is uh, not very necessary at the moment. Uh, so you just want to clarify on that point. Supposing I operate on a deep endometriosis with a lot of additions and I've done my job pretty well. So you think I should start on ART directly or uh, give some three months analog? Yes, uh, it's a good question, Dr. Kumar. Uh, there is no randomized studies. We have some small randomized studies and the level of evidence is not high. And the problem to do, I, I used to do this treatment before, always. But the problem, we spend a lot of time with the patient because uh, you, uh, maybe you, you, you need some month until the three months of therapy and uh, if you have, if you don't have success, you have to repeat this again. So the problem is to delay the treatment. And the, the uh, is it better than uh, doing the, the treatment or not doing? The answer, the level of our evidence is low, but in, even in the less ASHRAE consensus, they don't recommend that because the, it's a, a weak. A recommendation is not a strong recommendation, but because the level of evidence of benefits is low, uh, they don't recommend because you can spend a lot of time for these patients. Yeah, thank you very much. Narin, do you have any question or I, I can ask some more questions? No, I don't think there are any more here. I have so a couple of questions. He is yeah, except for maybe DIE, uh, we could uh, just recapitulate for everyone how, what would be the best way to diagnose it? Uh, normally, we uh, we need good uh, ultrasound or good magnetic resonance, nuclear magnetic resonance with good professionals. Uh, normally, we, we prefer to perform first uh, a good ultrasound. Uh, most of the patients, you can do a good diagnosis with that. Uh, but it's not the routine ultrasound. I think it's, it's quite important. Uh, it's not the, the, the vaginal routine. It's, it lasts a lot of time. I don't know about you, you India. If you have a lot of colleagues performing this specialized ultrasound to delimitate the, the, the invasion of the disease. And with that, it's, it's quite you you have a concordance bet between uh, magnetic resonance and ultrasound about 90-95%. Both examinations are good. Yeah, thank you very much. Naren, uh, anything from your side? Or we... So everyone who is watch watching this, please know that a very good performance Transvaginal, transvectal ultrasound is a must. I think we are losing his sign on. 
Is that for okay, you what well? he's saying? What Narendra Malhotra is telling is that a good ultrasound will pick up where the endometriosis is. So, do you think that the compartmentalized ultrasound vaginally is a good method to detect? Yes, yes, I agree with that. We have good, good, good examinations here. Yeah, I think that's what Nareen was trying to tell us. A good ultrasound would pick up all the nodules in the rectal vaginal space and other areas. So you were mentioning about this chronic inflammation. So do you think there's a role of macrophages and neurotropic gene expression because the pain is terrible? So do you think it's chronic inflammation and something like nerve sensitization causing this kind of a central nervous stimulation? Yeah, this is a good speculation. We, we have no good evidence about that, but it's a good speculation. And I think maybe we must think in the future about the pregnancy of these patients because, you know, we have some uh, more morbidity uh, during pregnancy and probably related to implantation like uh, pre preterm birth and uh, it's quite important and even adenomyosis it's it's another problem because with adenomyosis we have more difficult to probably more problem with implantation so these inflammatory are probably the main cause of infertility and uh, we, but we don't have a, a good clinical way to, to improve this. But I believe in the future we, we can have more uh, perspective about that. But uh, nowadays, I, I, I don't use, I, I, I know the process, I know the cause of process, but uh, we have nothing to do about that. Because of that, it's logical to think about the three months before to decrease the inflammatory of this patient. This is logical. But the problem is, is that we, we can delay the treatment and the improvement in clinical rates not so good because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. There's one interesting question for you. Now, the deep infiltrating endometriosis, radical surgery, is it really worth it? Or should we go ahead with the other modalities because we have good medical management? And I think this, uh, you know, kind of a radical surgery where everything is injured, and then they get into kind of uh, reanastomosis, those kind of things. So, what is your opinion about uh, extensive yeah. surgery? Yeah. As I said, I'm not a surgeon anymore, but yes, I, I know I know a lot of good surgeons, and they have a good experience with the radical surgery, with anastomosis, and uh, in in good hands, this surgery is improving. And the techniques are improving too much. And uh, we, we must think, even for results of uh, fertility, they will change with these new te uh, surgery techniques now, with good surgeons and new techniques. And I'm always following this, and I think we, we get some improvement. Uh, 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 it's not rare that the patient, I'm uh, an IVF doctor, uh, she wants to do an IVF, and sometimes I discuss with her, and I recommend a surgery with a good surgeon as well. Because of that, we must think uh, the best choice for them. But radical surgery and the, the good technique of surgery, I, I know Horace Roman, uh, even Chapron, they have a, a nice, uh, uh, very nice results with this patient. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. But uh, what I find is the deep infilting endometriosis. Uh, my, my question is, my doubt is, is it progressive over the years or is it just remains the same? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good question. I would like to answer that. But uh, what Chapron is always saying that we must think about one shot surgery. Uh, the problem to perform a lot of surgery is not good for the patient. And, uh, but even he, and I don't believe that uh, the recurrency rate of good surgery is high, even good hands. 
and the, the progress of, of, the, of the disease and the recurrence of the disease, they are high. Because of this, I discuss with the patients, maybe if she can wait at this time of her life to operate, maybe she will operate, but uh, some years later, uh, because uh, if I, I have a surgery, in the first years of the patients, 30, 20, 25, uh, probably will have to operate again in the future. And I, I wouldn't like to have two, three surgeries in my life. I don't think it's a good thing for the patient. I think you conveyed an excellent message to the people listening to us, but I also believe in that the surgery should be the best what you do for the first time. Repeat the surgeries are not needed. Of course, we should be avoiding. The first surgery must be very carefully chosen. And I think what general gynecologists are doing is they any, any cyst they find they want to operate, even without doing anti mullerian hormone and the ovarian reserve. And finally, they land up in an ART clinic like mine, and uh, they don't have any ovarian reserve at all. So I think it's a very important thing. And one more, one question to you is, very interesting question by the general popular uh, general gynecologist is one of the question is do you believe in doing ca125 in endometriosis uh, not really it's that no value for me i don't use that because it, it doesn't change my 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 approach and i think is is it's good for the following the patients after surgery if you have some recurrence. But for diagnosis, it's not, there's no good value because yes, it's not I, specific, I, it's not yes. sensitive. I'm glad you said that because certain of the people whom I know have operated on the whole ovary and removed the ovary just because the CA125 is very much raised. Oh. <laughs> I think it's a terrible mistake anybody yeah. can do. Because the CA125 can be terribly raised in endometriosis and people can mistake it for malignancy. And I know if the cyst ruptures and the fluid gets into the peritoneal cavity, it can even be worse. Uh, I think it's a good message you convey to all of us that do not do be unnecessarily alarmed with the CA125 raised. Is that right? Yes, I agree with you completely. I agree. It's quite important. Uh, it's not good to use uh, just for indicate surgery for this patient. It's not good. You have the, yes. the you have to see all the contests. Uh, of course, if you have a, a an Im image of endometriosis suspicion, in sometimes there is a difference of diagnosis with cancer, but it's a specific patient. Normally, uh, uh, patients old, older patients. And it's not common, this, this situation. And CA125 is not the best way to differentiate that. Thank you very much for answering all the questions by the people who have been listening to us and certain of my own question. And I would uh, thank you very much for your lovely presentation and the discussion. I would uh, request the Subhajit to uh, do the word of thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Rui Feriani, for your wonderful presentation. We had a more than uh, 1,400 plus gynecologists today logging in today, which speaks of the quality of the program, basically. Thank you very much, Dr. Pratap Kumar, and of course, Dr. Malhotra and Madam Jaydeep Malhotra. So let me just uh, conclude the session with a vote of thanks, basically. And this, uh, the, this is the sixth and final module in the six online modules series of continual medical education masterclass in endometriosis. We would like to thank Dr. Rui Feriani for sharing his clinical experience and time taken for this program. And also thank Dr. Yvonne for being the course coordinator. Harmonica Acumentis thanks Dr. Jaydeep Malhotra for her guidance, help, in bringing FIGO RAI certification program on endometriosis for our Indian doctors. I also take this opportunity to thank Dr. Pratap Kumar and Dr. Naren Malhotra for accepting our request and participating in this program and expressing their extensive clinical experience to all our participants. Special thanks to all viewers 
for joining this education program of FIGO on endometriosis and request all to attend the MCQs because this is the last program that we are telecasting. Watch out this space or contact our field force for the MCQ. Once you do this MCQ, you will be awarded two MMC credit points to all the participants and of course the FIGO certification. Please don't miss it. And last but not the least, we would like to acknowledge Doc Mode Health Technologies for being the technical support partner. Thank you very much. Good night and Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank nice you. to be with you here from Brazil. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Bye. once again and all the best Thank to you. all of you. Thank, Thank you. you.